Hi, I'm Liam Bricker. I'm Chair of Fetal Medicine at Corniche Hospital Abu Dhabi. So amniotic fluid abnormalities are quite common and I think um, there is not consistency in how we diagnose them and what is normal and what is considered to be abnormal. And I think we actually overdiagnose and cause a lot of anxiety. So I'm going to talk about why amniotic fluid is important for fetal development, um, what is abnormal amniotic fluid which is either too little oligohydramnios or too much polyhydramnios and how you define those using ultrasound measurements which is not the gold standard but it's the best way we have of clinically assessing amniotic fluid. I'm going to give people some guidance based on the evidence about how to diagnose amniotic fluid abnormalities and then some guidance about how to approach trying to diagnose why there's an amniotic fluid abnormality when it's there and then talk a little bit about the outcomes depending on what's causing the underlying problem with amniotic fluid amounts. So to um, estimate how much amniotic fluid around a baby, ideally you would want to take the amniotic fluid out and measure it in a jug. You cannot do that. So you have to use ultrasound markers to determine how much amniotic fluid there is around. And we use measurements on ultrasound scan but these there are different ways you can measure amniotic fluid and some people use um, the amniotic fluid index which is dividing the maternal uh, pregnant uterus into four quadrants and measuring the deepest pool in each quadrant and adding it up and some people just measure the deepest pool they can see um, both methods are valid but the measure the amniotic fluid index measurement actually gives you more false positives and that's one of the problems and current evidence is that the best way to assess amniotic fluid is to use a single deepest pocket. Now then people need to decide what are normal cutoffs and what are abnormal and some people use charts depending on the gestation and I advocate that we shouldn't be doing that we should actually just have standard cutoffs and amni abnormal amniotic fluid is either defined as too little amniotic fluid, which is called oligohydramnios, is if the deepest pool is less than two centimeters, or the amniotic fluid level um, index, sorry, is less than five centimeters. And polyhydramnios is defined as a single deepest pool more than eight centimeters less than 26 weeks gestation. After 26 weeks gestation, more than 10 centimeters, or an amniotic fluid index of more than 25. So um, too little amniotic fluid can be associated with fe fetal abnormalities or abnormality of placental function which results in poor fetal growth. It can also be found um, with no explanation. It can also be found when a woman has ruptured her membranes and so the fluid is leaking out. And sometimes in early pregnancy it's difficult to know if the woman has ruptured her membranes. So when we get a woman where there's too little amniotic fluid around the fetus, we have to evaluate um, whether we think the woman has ruptured her membranes, whether we think there's placental dysfunction causing the reduced amniotic fluid, or whether we think there's something wrong with the fetus. And depending on the underlying cause, we'll give you an idea to the prognosis for the baby. Too much amniotic fluid can be due to many reasons. It can be due to things wrong with the placenta, for example, placental tumors. It can be due to um, the fetus producing too much amniotic fluid because amniotic fluid is all fetal urine from 16 weeks gestation. So it means the baby is producing too much urine. That can occur, for example, if the mother has diabetes, the baby can produce too much amniotic fluid. Um, it could also be because the baby's not swallowing the amniotic fluid, because the amniotic fluid is a, a cycle. The baby swallows, produces urine, swallows, produces urine. If the baby's not swallowing properly, there can be increased amniotic fluid. And the baby may not swallow properly for several reasons. It may have a neurological condition, which leads to it not swallowing properly. It may be that it's got a cleft, a facial cleft. It may be that the baby actually has got a blockage somewhere in the gastrointestinal tract which is causing the fluid not to go down and all of those can cause increased amniotic fluid. But the vast majority of cases of increased amniotic fluid are actually idiopathic, unexplained.
So the, the outcome of reduced or increased amniotic fluid depends on the underlying cause. The majority of cases, it's not the amount of amniotic fluid that's the problem, it's whatever's causing it to be reduced or increased that is the problem. Having said that, if there's very little amniotic fluid around a baby, um, it leads to poor fetal lung development and that can be a real problem. If there's very increased fluid around a baby, it can lead to overstretching of the uterus and result in the woman going into preterm labor. Um, so the outcome really much depends on the underlying cause, but also the actual physical effects of the reduced amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid is very important around a fetus for several reasons. There are very rare cases where emergency interventions are required just because of amniotic fluid abnormalities. But intervention may be, if, for example, if the amniotic fluid is reduced around the fetus because of growth restriction, if the baby is growth restricted and unwell, the woman may need delivery, or otherwise the baby may die. But the other markers we use to decide how unwell the baby is, not, amniotic, not the amount of amniotic fluid. The amount of amniotic fluid leads us to make the diagnosis of potential problems with the growth, but then we assess the status of the fetus if we're using other markers to decide whether it needs to be delivered or not. There is one condition where if there's very much increased amniotic fluid, relative emergency treatment can result in a better outcome, and that is in the condition twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome. When you have twins that are identical and share a placenta, that develop um, an imbalance in blood flow in that shared placenta where one gets too much fluid, one gets too little fluid. So the one gets polyhydramnios, the other gets oligohydramnios. In that condition, if it's severe, with no treatment, the woman will almost certainly lose both babies. There is a treatment we can offer called laser photocoagulation of the placental communications. It's a keyhole surgery using laser, which can potentially treat that condition and re result in a better outcome. So I think it's an, a very important platform because it's invited expert speakers from all over. And it's very important that um, working clinicians have an opportunity to come and hear about the latest updates from experts who have clinical experience but also are basing their practice on the evidence base from good research. Um, and it is an opportunity to be updated and learn, which eventually should result in higher, better quality of, and safer care for, for women and babies. And it's also a good place to network and to discuss your interesting cases, and which again makes you a better clinician, makes you a better doctor, makes you better able to provide a high quality service.